So guys, as promised in this video, I will be covering one of the first topics of the account, specific topics, which will be one that I mentioned in the introductory videos, which is quantum physics. But of course, before jumping into it, we need to come back to the very concept of physics itself. So what is it, physics? Physics studies reality or nature at its most basic level. So it focuses on different aspects such as matter, also called physical form and in Spanish materia, different types of energy, behavior and motion, and also time and space. And it also focuses on their respective actions and interactions. So before jumping into quantum physics, we also need to explain what classical physics is. So what do we mean when we refer, when we use this term, right? Classical physics. So this term is basically used to refer to the physics that was born in the 17th century, and that is to say the Age of Enlightenment. Despite classical physics great discoveries and experiments and contributions, the field was conditioned by a very specific aspect that was embedded in classical physics perspective, which was the role that they were giving to the observer. So when classical physicists were carrying out the experiments, they were not giving any role to the observer because they were measuring and identifying physical phenomena and the results or how they were observing physical phenomena and the conclusions were consistent. They were very consistent. And they were consistent independently from who was carrying out the experiment, who was observing the phenomena. And this is the reason why physical phenomena seemed to be fixed and determined. And as you might be guessing, this, of course, influenced classical physics perspective on reality. In deep connection with classical physics, uh, we need to mention a specific philosophy that emerged from it. And not only this, but also sustained classical physics perspective of reality, which is the philosophy called reductionist materialism. I'm aware that it's a long name, but let's save the second part of the term, which is materialism. According to this philosophy, matter, physical form, in Spanish materia, was seen as the foundational principle element of reality. It was the essence of reality, according to reductionist materialists. And this is the reason why it's called materialism, right? Because they were really focusing on matter, physical form. So as a result of this, they identified reality as something, let's say, fixed and determined, because they were believing that physical form, matter, physical phenomena also seem to be fixed and determined, right? And as a result of this, the implication of this perspective was that classical physicists and materialists, they were thinking that pure objectivity was possible. If you identified reality as something objective, you truly think that pure objectivity was possible and mainly through observation. And this is the reason why they were also identifying science and in this case physics as the field that needed to pursue this pure objectivity. They literally believed that it was possible and feasible. However, and now you will be understanding why the emergence of quantum physics was a major shift and brought a totally new perspective, is that classical physics and also the philosophy that I mentioned connected with it, which is reductionist materialism, they faced a major limitation. And not only this, but also, in a sense, failed to explain something, which is something that we all can attest that it exists. No one can deny that it does exist. And what is it? It's consciousness. And what was the major limitation and what was the major failure? The major failure of classical physics was that, according to its view, everything has appeared from matter, from physical form, from materia. So how could you explain the existence of something that it's not matter, such as our consciousness? And how could you explain that consciousness came from matter? 
of course this was impossible to explain and this was let's say a fundamental limitation of this kind of physics and this was also related to the fact that of course classical physicists and materialists were denying the existence of a spiritual domain or spiritual realm because it's not matter it's nothing that you could touch having said that now we are able to move into quantum physics and understand which was the context and why the emergence and development and the rise of quantum physics is such an important event but before going into it more deeply i just would like to briefly highlight that in this video I won't be diving, let's say, into the technical aspects or the details of quantum physics experiments. And I will be mainly focusing on the discoveries, implications and meaning. Of course, I'm not implying that the technical or the specific aspects of the experiments are not important. But in this video, they won't be playing any role and they are not so important, let's say, for this video's purpose. So having said that, and concerning quantum physics, I need to mention that it emerged in the early 1920s and that it studies reality at its atomic and subatomic level. Its discoveries contradicted the theories and the models of classical physics and materialism. And it contradicted the very idea that we are very familiarized with because it has been the hegemonic one, the hegemonic paradigm for a very long time, which is the idea of a mechanistic universe in which matter and physical form is fundamental. So concerning the two main discoveries that I will be explaining in this video, they are the so-called quantum superposition and on the other hand, we have the so-called quantum entanglement. So concerning the first discovery that I just mentioned, the quantum superposition, this literally showed that particles can exist in two different states at the same time, but until they are measured. So they also realize that measurement itself influences the particles. And this is what is known as the observer effect. So it is observation, the thing that collapses superposition into a definite state. That is to say that when the particle is observed, it is when the particle collapses into a definite state. And this is the reason why the superposition discovery has far reaching implications for our understanding of reality, because it has literally demonstrated that reality is never fixed until it is observed and that reality exists in multiple states simultaneously. As you might be already understanding and guessing as well, this represents a major rupture with the perspective held by classical physics and materialism. So concerning the second discovery that I have mentioned, quantum entanglement, I need to mention that it's the idea that particles which share the same origin and that were once connected, they always stay connected. This is the case even when particles separate and let's say when they move far apart in time and space, they always maintain a bond. And this is more than a mere bond. Particles, while leaving their original quantum state, they take on a new unified quantum state, which they keep forever. The implication of this is that what happens to one particle, it also affects all the other particles with which it's entangled. You might be asking yourself, what's the implication of this? Or what's the fundamental aspect of this discovery, right? And the fundamental aspect present within quantum entanglement is the so-called non-locality. And this is what allows for instantaneous communication between particles, but and here comes the important aspect, regardless of distance. And as you might be guessing, it has been this discovery, or let's say these connections that there are between particles, regardless of distance, the aspect that has challenged our classical interpretation of reality and also our classical notions of time and space. And this is the reason why it has so important implications. Moving on to the conclusion, finally, right guys? 
I will be highlighting what is the main takeaway, you know, from all the information that I have shared with you. I hope that it has not been that long or that boring. And I will be also emphasizing what are the two most relevant ideas, you know, in relation to this major takeaway from all this information about quantum physics discoveries. And I will be also making a final comment about a very interesting topic also connected with quantum physics discoveries and the respective implications. So concerning what is the major takeaway from all this information and content, I just would like to highlight the idea that it is no exaggeration at all that quantum physics has completely invalidated classical physics perspective of reality. The classical interpretation of reality, the materialist interpretation of reality, you know, and being more specific, what quantum physics has invalidated is the interpretation of reality that for a relatively long time has been the hegemonic one, has been the dominant one, has been the one that seemed the most aligned with science. But it's not the case anymore. Quantum physics as the science that it is, the one that has invalidated this interpretation of reality in which there's an objective universal reality outside us that can be objectively measured and identified and which is based on matter. This has been totally invalidated. And the, and the interesting and powerful thing is that the perspective that seemed to be the most scientific one opposed to religion or spirituality is not scientific anymore, is not valid anymore. That's why it's such an important topic. So moving on to the two aspects that, in my opinion, are the most important ones to un understand, let's say, this discovery made by quantum physics. First of all, we have the idea that there is no objective reality and that there is what is called a fundamental observer dependence. So that at the end, there's never a single state of affairs. There's no single reality. And it is measurement itself. It is observation itself, the aspect creating reality at the end. And that's why quantum physics suggests and says that you need to include the subjective experience if you want to have a true picture of reality. You know, it's inseparable. The second aspect is related to the idea of matter. And quantum physics has challenged the traditional understanding interpretation of matter. Rather than viewing matter, or let's say being more specific, particles as solid, independent objects, quantum physics sees them as probability waves or quantum fields. So concerning the final comment that I would like to make and share with you, it's about what it's, in my opinion, the most interesting topic by far, which is the rising similarities, right? That there are between quantum physics and spirituality. So between quantum physics, let's say, and certain or several spiritual traditions, interpretations of reality and philosophies. So I will be now sharing, let's say, with you what are the major aspects that they have in common. But before referring to them, I just would like to briefly highlight that the perspective or the, yeah, the interpretation that I'm giving to you is very well explained, indeed wonderfully explained in a video that I share with you in my Canvas slides on my Instagram profile and also in this video's description. And it's a conference held by two very famous physicists, two doctors in physics with the Dalai Lama, which now you will be understanding why it's such a cool conference and what's the topic about. And this conference, really, it's wonderful, guys. I highly recommend you to watch it. It's organized by a very famous and renowned institute and research center, which is called Mind and Life Institute. And really, like how these two doctors in physics explain the main ideas and implications of quantum physics and also what does it mean for our perspective of reality and also you know it's rising similarities with in this case buddhism it's truly amazing guys so i highly recommend it to you 
because it will help you a lot and it will also break away not only with my video but i would say especially with this video indeed you will be even more able to break away with the belief that understanding the implications of quantum physics is complex this video is wonderful so watch it if you want of course so concerning the major aspects that quantum physics and spirituality have in common of course we need to highlight that at the end both fields highlight that consciousness it is at the end a central element of our reality and that there is in a sense what it has been called for instance by these two physicists that i just mentioned the so-called fundamental observer dependence that at the end there's an inseparable influence of observer and observed the second aspect which is a consequence of the first one which both fields have also in common and sure is that at the end they both go against any materialist interpretation of reality and perhaps their respective starting point is not the same and their respective wording or the concepts that both fields use are not maybe the same but at the end they both deny this perspective based on matter because at the end while quantum physics is pointing out that there is an energetic dimension spirituality has always highlighted that there's also a dimension which is not material which is not matter can't be explained by it and can be referred as a spiritual dimension or domain right so they also have this in common and last but not least the third aspect that they have in common and it's also a consequence of the two is that at the end both fields quantum physics and also spirituality they both suggest a holistic universe in which of course our consciousness or and our psyche is part of it and they both share this unified vision of the universe so this has been the first video guys i thank you very much for your time and your attention hope you have enjoyed it. and stay tuned because in the next video i will be explaining how we could apply this to our daily life right because as every knowledge it has also its respective application and also to our daily life so as in any class at least a good one feel free to ask any question guys or to write down any comment and see you in the next videos thank you